Shane is back on the grid. Apparently, he took a bullet, but the doctor says he'll be okay. This military officer then reveals they needed the professor because he was working on a top secret project. It's called Ghost. And I know I can trust you. And it's apparently a signal jammer for nuclear launching. Powerful stuff for a tiny briefcase. Since Ghost is still missing, he's gonna be put back out on the field. So Shane gets packing and he remembers the debriefing. Basically, Ghost is somewhere in the professor's family home. We're hoping it's the Ghost program. So he has two priorities, to look for Ghost and to protect the Plummer family. Should be a walk in the park, right? Well, it's already a bit of a disaster just at the doorbell. This is Julie Plummer, and that little girl that screamed her lungs out is Lulu. Let's meet the rest of them. Here's Zoe, Seth, and Peter. And not to mention baby Tyler and the help Helga. We have the full Plummer package. It's been hardest on Zoe and Seth. So Julie talks about her family and the feeling of danger since someone broke into their house a while back. Well, someone's already breaking into Shane's eardrum. I forgot to mention Gary, their pet duck here. Now that he knows what he has to protect, Shane gets moving. He installs a lot of security defenses around the house, including cameras, automated locks, and burglar alarms. Hours later, Julie has to be gone for two days. Mom, chill, we're gonna be fine. So she says goodbye to her family. She hands over the baby, then she zooms off. The first night on the job, Shane already hears screaming and gunfire. He goes to the source, and it's just Lulu playing Mortal Kombat 2. Appropriate game for a little kid. This house is in shambles. Suddenly, one of Shane's alarms goes off. So it's game time. He runs outside, and there's an idiot climbing the house. Shane stops him, and the loud alarm makes Zoe come out. What are you doing, you spaz? That's my boyfriend. Apparently, this is Scott, Zoe's boyfriend. Man, she has awful taste in men. The Korean neighbors complain, then Shane turns off the alarms. He then makes Scott Pilgrim here do 20 push-ups. This sets off Zoe. She wants Shane to bud out of her personal life, so she does what any white girl would do. Your mother was worried sick about you. Embarrass herself. Lights out, everyone. At least Helga looks like she's having fun lulling the baby to sleep. The next morning, a 10 hut. Shane gives the kids a rude awakening. It's Sunday even flip Seth over like a sack of diapers. During breakfast, he makes an announcement about their unruly system. It's his way and the only way that's going to be followed. Lulu takes this way too literally and copies his words to annoy him. Hey, I mean it, cut it out. All right, so Shane's got a few toys to keep the plumbers in check, specifically these tracking devices, but Zoe doesn't want to wear them. Well, that's not how the chain of command works while Shane is in charge. He tags them, but Seth is suddenly missing. Shane goes to his room and since it's locked, it's time to plant some breaching charges. By that I mean totally obliterating the door with his stumpy leg. Actually, Seth was in the bathroom and he was shocked and awed by this. Shane tags him, then Zoe tells him in secret that they have to stage a coup. Some minutes later, Shane does some training and he looks up at Helga's private file. He then hears Lulu's cries for help. So he makes a dash. It's just her being annoyed by Peter with a ghostly blanket on. Peter, have you seen this ghost? On the other end, the older kids oil up the stairs and uh-oh. It almost looks like Shane was about to fall into their trap, but nope, Helga takes the fall instead. In some bank in Zurich, Switzerland, here's Julie. They're here to collect something from Howard Plummer's own safety deposit box, but the bank teller needs a password. Passwords? Oh well, that password should keep them busy. So let's get back to Shane and Helga. The latter decides to quit thanks to the oil incident, then the phone rings. Helga takes this chance to book it, but Shane answers the phone and grabs her. It's Julie on the other line. No, 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 everything's okay. She says she needs a few more days while Shane wrestles Helga around not to leave. Things get worse because Helga bites him, and with that, adios. So now Shane has to secure the kids and take care of them. Looks like Shane's gonna be swamped too because each of the kids has their own wants and needs to fulfill. I've got fireflies. I have to go. Starting with Tyler's diaper. This is bad because this is going to be Shane's first time changing a diaper, and he treats it as if he was diffusing C4. The night comes along with its first challenge. It's Lulu, and she has a ton of chatter to throw at Shane. He becomes a bit weirded out by some of her questions, so he throws them back at her. The following morning, it's breakfast time. Time to get their grub on. MREs? Stay away from the cheese if it back you up for a month. Well, that's fine, but these children really need some work. Man, even Peter slips the entire table down. Shane then gets a call, and it's the vice principal of the kid's school. Guess it's time to go. Shane gets strapped up. Then he puts the pedal to the metal on this minivan. 
They arrive at school in style, and they get in the vice principal's office. Speaking of which, this is him. Dwayne Murney stares daggers into these kids' eyes. He's not above flaunting his authority. You're in my house now, strong man. And not to mention, he's also the wrestling coach. Why do we need to care about that detail? Well, supposedly, Seth over there has been dodging wrestling classes. Zoe's also playing hooky with her driving classes. His authority is absolute until the real girl boss arrives. This is Claire Fletcher, the head principal of this joint. She excuses the kids for today, and she and Shane do a little banter. You're a team's guy. Apparently, she used to be in the Navy as well for four years. Shane respects her real authority, and he even asks permission to stick around and keep an eye on the kids. Permission granted. Everything looks relatively normal with the kids, so she looks up Claire's files. Huh, she's clean. During lunchtime, however, something dirty plays out. Seth is getting his tuckus handed to him, so Shane intervenes. Boys will be boys, huh? It also looks like that hairy deformity known as Dwayne is there as well. He's allowing the bullying so that Seth could man up a bit. But come on, six versus one is totally not fair. While they're talking, Dwayne takes this chance to flex his non-existent combat skills to an actual soldier. He belittles him just because he's on babysitting duty. Dwayne mangles off, then Seth actually gets mad at Shane for intervening. What a sourpuss. Hey, rough day. Shane later gets his hands full with the baby. Then Claire approaches him. Suddenly, his tracker goes off and something isn't right. He zips off to follow the signal. He's out here in Tokyo drifting that dang minivan. Where are you going? He then crashes it into a construction site and infiltrates a sewer to chase the tracker. Yeesh, the Navy really has hardened him. At least Claire took the kids home and is looking after them. Coming home, however, is a very dirty Shane. Is there anything I can do? Sheesh, open a window. Shane's a walking biological weapon with that scent. Shane gets showering that stink, but he needs to get something in the kitchen. Turns out Lulu invited her Girl Scouts and they saw all of Shane's muscly glory. Lulu and Julie were in charge of these little troopers, but since Julie isn't here, this is Shane's problem now too. I don't do cookies. This problem includes selling cookies, so now Shane's gonna lead these ladies as their new den mother. They pack their stuff and they roll out. Welcome to this infamous battleground we call Costco. It looks peaceful when Shane is shopping, but trouble suddenly approaches. It's the Boy Scouts, and they're not too happy about seeing these girls. How are we supposed to sell raffle tickets? They terrorize and scare the girls away. Shane tracks them back to the car, and Lulu tattles on the boys. Well, Shane's mission prioritizes Lulu, not the cookies, so it's time to head home. Add a tat tat tat, not before eating. Eating where? Well, here at this bootleg Chuck E. Cheese. No matter how fake, it's still as chaotic and rancid as the real thing. They have an okay time, but Peter gets left behind, so Shane comes back for him. I've never left a man behind. Oh. That and his grenade of a diaper, too. While they're gone, the plumber's house is flooded with teenagers. Someone's gonna be in big trouble. That someone is Zoe and her little boyfriend here. Shane arrives and he wants this place spotless. I'm out of here. Of course, Scott tries to beat it, but we all know how that ends. The kids get cleaned, and during this time, Shane actually finds the program disc for Ghost. Of course, it looks like someone else wants that disc. The cleaning party ends, and that little stunt really ticks Zoe off. She wants Shane gone, but he will be once Julie comes back. In the meantime, fight these ninjas. The kids hide while Shane knows some fast and furious moves. It's two on one, but that doesn't stop Shane from pummeling these jokers. They all go to town on one another, whether it would be sticks or fists. Don't move. It's too much for these dollar store mercenaries, so now they're on the run. Now that Shane protects these kids, he finally gets some respect around here. Shane later pops the disc in, and it's a regular copy of the ghost movie? Must be the wrong CD. I think we're gonna need a little more cooperation. Oh well, at least Shane and the kids finally come to an agreement this time. First, it's Zoe's driving class, and she crashes the grade and the car. Next is Seth here. He dyed his hair, and wow, it looks atrocious. Oh, and he's harboring this no-no sign that hopefully the editor will censor or will get demonetized. This is not normal. We're very concerned. On the way home, Shane tries to reason with Seth, but he reveals he only wanted to join the wrestling team because that's what his father wanted. Well, there might be a bigger story considering Seth just escaped the house. Springing into action and development, Shane puts Zoe in charge. Then it's time for a little reconnaissance mission. Seeing Seth get on a bus, he has no choice but to follow on a bike. The bus finally stops, and please censor those armbands, editor. It looks bad for Seth, so Shane sneaks in. Inside, the hills are alive with the sound of music. No, literally, though 
those questionable armbands are just props for a sound of music play. It's going great. Up until Seth drops the girl, this disappoints the director to the point that he quits. Shane helps him up, but Seth isn't going to quit just yet. Au contraire, because Shane is actually here to help him out. In fact, he takes it upon himself to even direct this entire play. Thanks to his experience, strong will, and confidence, I choreographed multi -pronged. the production staff falls in. The night arrives and Shane tells Lulu a bedtime story. Well, this story sounds more like Operation Kingfish rather than an elf story. Seth then tells him he has to do the routine panda dance or Tyler will never fall asleep. Oh well, he's face worse, right? Another day and another drive to school. Hold up, this time Zoe's driving. We're all gonna die. She's a little rough around the edges, but hey, at least everyone gets to school in one piece. The kids head to class while Shane sticks around. Principal Claire approaches him and it looks like he's doing much better with the kids than before. He also does a little of the moves on her, if you catch my drift. Drifting aside, here comes Dwayne bullying Seth again. Seth comes clean that he's got a musical to worry about, but Dwayne judges him. Hey, it's gotta be a tiny house. <laughs> Acting in Sound of Music is the manliest thing you can do. Getting tired of his antics. Shane challenges Dwayne to some good old wrestling. Today, after school, this becomes the word on the street, and before you know it, it's after school. Dwayne gets the hype and cheers behind him, but this all just goes over Shane's bald head. Dwayne flaunts, flexes, then rushes him, but he fails really fast, record time fast. In fact, he turns him into a laughing stock. Dwayne is down for the count and the crowd goes wild. Poetic justice for that greaseball degenerate. After that display, Shane gets it together with the plumbers. This includes training the Girl Scouts, taking care of the baby, giving driving lessons to Zoe, and even managing the play. It's all coming together now. Heck, he even gets to do the Peter Panda dance. A new day comes for the Girl Scouts and trouble approaches yet again, but this time they're prepared. Looks like Lieutenant Shane taught them CQC well. Back in Switzerland, Julie finally figures out the password and they finally access the safety deposit box. That key looks pretty valuable. Back at home, Zoe looks down in the dumps, so Shane tries to cheer her up with his own little backstory. Looks like Shane lost both of his parents at a very young age, so he grew up to be a hardened military guy. I do miss him. Zoe here is just missing her dad, but Shane's here to make it all better. Soon, the happy news of Julie coming home fills the entire house with joy. Further into the night, Shane discovers a secret passage in their garage. That's where Ghost is. Shane immediately tells his commanding officer, Captain Bill Fawcett. The kids prepare for their mother's arrival, but they will surely miss Shane. Eventually, Julie finally comes home and her kids pleasantly surprise them. Welcome home, Mom. Captain Fawcett is supremely impressed with his performance, and he's now given a choice of any mission he wants next. That's until they get ambushed by the ninjas. Turns out, they're the Chuns. They want the ghost key, so they hold Shane and Captain Fawcett at gunpoint, so their guns are quickly taken. Plot twist, Captain Fawcett is in cahoots with them. Stop talking. Since Shane is knocked out, Fawcett restrains the rest of the plumbers. Looks like he's on North Korea's pay grade. One ninja guards the kids, while the other one comes with Fawcett to the ghost facility. Looks like the key works as well. A big hallway is revealed, and it looks booby-trapped, so it won't be a walk in the park. On the other hand, the kids use what little training they have and escape the clutches of this ninja. They lock him in, then Seth hits him for good measure. The kids eventually get to Shane and they wake him up. He's gonna go after Julie while the kids get help. Looks like one of the ninjas escapes and he follows Zoe and the kids. It's a hot pursuit and this ninja is persistent. That's until a diaper ruins his day and he crashes. <laughs> Zoe then pulls some crazy car stunts to get the cops' attention, and it works. It also gets Principal Claire's attention as well. Back at the ghost vault, Fawcett is trying to get Julie to stop the security system, but even she doesn't know how. That's when Shane steps in and says the code, but it doesn't work. I know, Howard, you haven't got a chance. You know what does work? The Peter Panda dance. Yes, sir, that silly dance was actually instructions on how to bypass the booby traps. The coast is clear, so they cross over. 
Fawcett and the Ninja have a disagreement, so they think fast. Shane and Julie manage to knock them out and Shane gets the ghost just in time. Zoe and the kids come with the cops, but that last ninja shows up with a bigger gun. Having no choice, Shane surrenders the ghost until a tag team between Principal Claire and Gary takes down the last ninja. Fawcett and the ninjas are arrested. Then, of course, Shane gets the girl. Since his mission is done here, Lulu gives him a great big goodbye hug. We still have one more mission. Actually, they have one last operation, the sound of music. Seth gives a ravishing performance, and it looks like Shane might stick around. Heck, even Dwayne finds his dreams in this play. Bravo! Encore to these soldiers because that was the pacifier. Starring Vin Diesel, Lauren Graham, and Brittany Snow. Which was your suburban mission? Let us know in the comments below using hashtag cinema recap, and we'll see you in the next undercover action.